Hello everyone, this is a by request supplemental video to the previously two part series on the medical HMP. The learning objective here is simply to demonstrate the subtleties of presentation in order to elevate a merely adequate medical HMP to a great one. I'll first be demonstrating a presentation that is at the level of what I would expect from a good preclinical medical student or possibly from a clinical student on his or her first couple of days during their rotation in internal medicine. I would encourage viewers to make note of the various suboptimal features of the presentation. Some of these suboptimal features will be obvious and some will not be. I'll then play the same presentation again, this time with annotations to the side indicating what should be changed in order to make the presentation much better. Finally, I'll play a revised version of the presentation incorporating the changes so viewers can get a sense of how an adequate presentation sounds differently from a great one. This revised presentation is what I would expect from an above average student near the end of his or her medicine rotation. Because the point of the video is a comparison of presentation skills between levels of training and not a comparison of clinical reasoning skills, the presentations will only extend through the impression or through what I refer to as the linking statement. For the chief complaint, Ms. Brown is a 58-year-old woman presenting with shortness of breath for three weeks. So Ms. Brown has a history of hypertension, type 2 diabetes, and hyperlipidemia, who was brought to the ER at 2 o'clock in the morning this, uh, this morning by ambulance because of sudden onset of severe shortness of breath. She first noticed she was having a problem three weeks ago when she noted increasing shortness of breath when completing household chores and walking up steps and began sleeping on two to three pillows at night. This continued until 2 a.m. on the day of admission when she woke up uh, after it acutely worsened. Her husband noted that she was breathing rapidly, was only comfortable sitting uh, upright or standing, and was slightly blue in color, so naturally he called 911. Uh, she received oxygen in the ambulance along with some nitroglycerin, aspirin, and Lasix in the ER when she got here, um, and now she's feeling a little bit better. Uh, Ms. Brown denies a history of asthma. Uh, she denies pleuritic chest pain. She has not, have, uh, not have had any fever or weight loss. Uh, she has noticed a non-productive cough for several weeks, though. Um, she has a prior smoking history, but stopped in 2006. Uh, her father had an MI at age 54. She denies sick contacts or unusual travel. Uh, she was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes uh, 10 years ago, and is currently on metformin and gliburide. Uh, her past, past medical history um, is notable for hypertension, diagnosed in 2004. Uh, diabetes, which I already mentioned, uh, diagnosed in 2003, and hyperlipidemia 2004. Her surgical history uh, includes an appendectomy in 1977 and a cholecystectomy in 1998. Her OBGYN history is notable for her being G3P3, uh, and she is status post a hysterectomy in 2008. Her psych history is notable for multiple episodes of depression, uh, but she currently denies any symptoms of that. Uh, medications include HTTZ, lisinopril, metformin, gliburide, uh, Zocor, and aspirin. Um, she's allergic to penicillin and uh, iodine. Uh, social history is, is kind of interesting. She, uh, she's notable, um, well, she quit smoking six years ago. Uh, she's drinking one to two alcoholic drinks per day, sometimes with a glass of wine, sometimes a mixed drink. Uh, she's married, mother of two. She completed her associate's degree it, at uh, De Anza College. Uh, and works full-time as administrative assistant for Cisco Systems. She's got two dogs at home, uh, but no other strange animals or uh, animal exposures. Um, she enjoys movies and knitting. Her dietary habits are pretty normal. Um, she usually cooks for herself, doesn't eat out for all that much. Um, she's sexually active with one partner, her husband. Um, no travel except a recent trip to Disneyland uh, with her children. On her view of systems, she denies fever, chills, weight loss, uh, or change in appetite. Uh, in the respiratory system, as already mentioned, she reports the shortness of breath with exertion and lying down. Um, cardiovas cardiovascularly, she denies chest pain, palpitations, lightheadedness. Uh, in the abdomen, she has no pain, nausea, uh, vomiting, or changes in her bowel habits. Uh, no dysuria or hematuria. No joint pains or joint swelling, but she has had some swelling in her ankles during the past three weeks. Uh, no skin rashes or bruises, and uh, no neuro symptoms. Uh, in general, on exam, uh, she is overweight and in modest respiratory discomfort. Her pulse is 100 and regular. 
Respirations are 24, blood pressure 130 over 105, temperature 37.1. Uh, HEENT exam shows her pupils are equally round and reactive to light. Sclera are anecteric. She's got normal extraocular muscles. Oral pharynx is clear with good tentition. Fundoscopic exam is unremarkable. Uh, pulmonary, she, her lungs are of occasional crackles, but no ronchar or wheezes. On heart exam, she has a regular rate and rhythm with a displaced PMI uh, and normal S1, S2. Uh, she had a loud murmur that was systolic. Uh, I'm not really sure how to grade it, but uh, I suppose since I could hear it, it's probably at least a two or three out of six. Um, abdomen is protuberant, uh, was uh, soft without tenderness, uh, no organomegaly and no, uh, I'm sorry, normal bowel sounds. Uh, her skin shows no rashes, ecchymoses, or other lesions. Extremities with one plus pinning edema, uh, with no cyanosis or clubbing. Uh, I did a really thorough neuro exam. I wanted to really kind of practice that today. Um, so she's uh, she's oriented times three. Cranial, cranial nerves two through twelve are intact. Uh, her motor strength is five out of five in all extremities in all major muscle groups. Uh, sensation to light touch and proprioception and vibration, all that's intact in all extremities. Her upper extremity reflexes are one plus and lower extremity reflexes are two plus. Um, I didn't get up to walk around because she was looking kind of uncomfortable and um, still from the breathing issue and um, she had a lot of wires on her and stuff. So um, moving on to her labs, uh, her white count was 8,700, H&H is 12 and 37 uh, with an MCV of 85. Her platelets are 202. Her Chem 7 shows a sodium of 141, potassium 3.8, chloride 102, Bicarb 28, BUN 24, creatinine 1.1, and glucose 186. Her uh, AST LT are in the 40s. Her tolibrilirubin was 1.2. Alkphos was 110. Uh, troponin is still pending. I'm not really sure why lab's taking a while on that one. Um, INR is 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, the UH has uh, no white, white cells, no red cells, uh, no leukoesterase, um, 2 plus protein, uh, no ketones, 2 plus glucose, and no bacteria. Um, her chest x-ray um, shows cardiomegaly, pulmonary vascular redistribution. She had some fluid in the right costophrenic sulcus uh, and possibly some cur curly B lines, but you know, I'm not really sure. Um, her EKG um, shows sinus tack, occasional PVCs, uh, left axis deviation, and LVH. So in summary, um, Ms. Brown is a 58-year-old woman who has a history of hypertension, diabetes, and hyperlipidemia who's now presenting with shortness of breath for three weeks and some lower extremity edema. For the chief complaint, Ms. Brown is a 58-year-old woman presenting with shortness of breath for three weeks. So Ms. Brown has a history of hypertension, type 2 diabetes, and hyperlipidemia who was brought to the ER at 2 o'clock in the morning this, uh, this morning by ambulance because of sudden onset of severe shortness of breath. She first noticed she was having a problem three weeks ago when she noted increasing shortness of breath when completing household chores and walking up steps and began sleeping on two to three pillows at night. This continued until 2 a.m. on the day of admission when she woke up uh, after it acutely worsened. Her husband noted that she was breathing rapidly, was only comfortable sitting uh, upright or standing, and was slightly blue in color, so naturally he called 911. Uh, she received oxygen in the ambulance along with some nitroglycerin, aspirin, and Lasix in the ER when she got here, um, and now she's feeling a little bit better. Uh, Ms. Brown denies a history of asthma. Uh, she denies pleuritic chest pain. She does not have, uh, not have had any fever or weight loss. Uh, she has noticed a non-productive cough for several weeks though. Um, she has a prior smoking history but stopped in 2006. Uh, her father had an MI at age 54. She denies sick contacts or unusual travel. Uh, she was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes uh, 10 years ago and is currently on metformin and gliburide. Uh, her past, past medical history um, is notable for hypertension, diagnosed in 2004, uh, diabetes, which I already mentioned, uh, diagnosed in 2003, and hyperlipidemia 2004. Her surgical history uh, includes an appendectomy in 1977 and a cholecystectomy in 1998. Her OBGYN history is notable for her being G3P3 uh, and she is status post a hysterectomy in 2008. Her psych history is notable for multiple episodes of depression, uh, but she currently denies any symptoms of that. Uh, medications include HTTZ, lisinopril, metformin, gliburide, uh, Zocor, and aspirin. 
Um, she's allergic to penicillin and uh, iodine. Uh, social history is, is kind of interesting. She, uh, she's notable, um, well, she quit smoking six years ago. Uh, she's drinking one to two alcoholic drinks per day, sometimes with a glass of wine, sometimes a mixed drink. Uh, she's married, mother of two. She completed her associate's degree it, at uh, De Anza College uh, and works full-time as administrative assistant for Cisco Systems. She's got two dogs at home, uh, but no other strange animals or uh, animal exposures. Um, she enjoys movies and knitting. Her dietary habits are pretty normal. Um, she usually cooks for herself, doesn't eat out for all that much. Um, she's sexually active with one partner, her husband. Uh, no travel except a recent trip to Disneyland uh, with her children. On her view of systems, she denies fever, chills, weight loss, uh, or change in appetite. Uh, in the respiratory system, as I already mentioned, she reports the shortness of breath with exertion and lying down. Um, cardiovas cardiovascularly, she denies chest pain, palpitations, lightheadedness. Uh, in the abdomen, she has no pain, nausea, uh, vomiting, or changes in her bowel habits. Uh, no dysuria or hematuria. No joint pains or joint swelling, but she has had some swelling in her ankles during the past three weeks. Uh, no skin rashes or bruises, and uh, no neuro symptoms. Uh, in general, on exam, uh, she is overweight and in modest respiratory discomfort. Her pulse is 100 and regular. Respirations are 24, blood pressure 130 over 105, temperature 37.1. Uh, HEENT exam shows her pupils are equally round and reactive to light. Sclera are anecteric. She's got normal extraocular muscles. Oral pharynx is clear with good dentition. Fundoscopic exam is unremarkable. Uh, pulmonary, she, her lungs are of occasional crackles, but no ronchar wheezes. On heart exam, she has a regular rate and rhythm with a displaced PMI uh, and normal S1, S2. Uh, she had a loud murmur that was systolic. Uh, I'm not really sure how to grade it, but uh, I suppose since I could hear it, it's probably at least a two or three out of six. Um, abdomen is protuberant, uh, was uh, soft without tenderness, uh, no organomegaly, and no, uh, I'm sorry, and normal bowel sounds. Uh, her skin shows no rashes, ecchymoses, or other lesions. Extremities with one plus pinning edema, uh, with no cyanosis or clubbing. Uh, I did a really thorough neuro exam. I wanted to really kind of practice that today. Um, so she's uh, she's oriented times three. Her cranial, cranial nerves two through twelve are intact. Uh, her motor strength is five out of five in all extremities in all major muscle groups. Uh, sensation to light touch and proprioception and vibration, all that's intact in all extremities. Her upper extremity reflexes are one plus and lower extremity reflexes are two plus. Um, I didn't get up to walk around because she was looking kind of uncomfortable and um, still from the breathing issue and um, he had a lot of wires on her and stuff. So um, moving on to her labs, uh, her white count was 8,700, H&H is 12 and 37 uh, with an MCV of 85. Her platelets are 202. Her Chem 7 shows a sodium of 141, potassium 3.8, chloride 102, Bicarb 28, BUN 24, creatinine 1.1, and glucose 186. Her uh, ASTLT are in the 40s. Her tolibrilirubin was 1.2. Alkphos was 110. Uh, troponin is still pending. I'm not really sure why lab's taking a while on that one. Um, INR is 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, the UH has uh, no white, white cells, no red cells, uh, no leukoesterase, um, 2 plus protein, uh, no ketones, 2 plus glucose, and no bacteria. Um, her chest x-ray um, shows cardiomegaly, pulmonary vascular redistribution. She had some fluid in the right costophrenic sulcus uh, and possibly some cur curly B lines, but you know, I'm not really sure. Um, her EKG um, shows sinus tack, occasional PVCs, uh, left axis deviation, and LVH. So in summary, um, Ms. Brown is a 58-year-old woman who has a history of hypertension, diabetes, and hyperlipidemia who's now presenting with shortness of breath for three weeks and some lower extremity edema. The chief complaint. Ms. Brown is a 58-year-old woman with diabetes, hypertension, and hyperlipidemia presents with shortness of breath for three weeks. Ms. Brown uh, reports being in her usual state of average health until three weeks ago, at which time she developed a gradual onset of shortness of breath while walking up stairs and com uh, completing some routine housework. Over the next three weeks, her shortness of breath gradually worsened such that its onset required less and less exertion. During this time, 
She also began experiencing trouble breathing while lying down at night, prompting her to begin sleeping on two to three pillows instead of her usual one. Finally, on the day of admission, she abruptly woke at 2 a.m. with severe breathing difficulties and was noted by her husband to be slightly blue, who then immediately called 911. She currently describes her shortness of breath as constant and severe. She describes it kind of in her own words as, quote, I can't get enough oxygen uh, in fast enough. And she's most concerned that she may be having a heart attack um, because that's what her father passed away from uh, at about approximately the same age as herself. Her other cardiovascular risk factors include uh, prior smoking. Uh, relevant review of systems is notable for ankle swelling and a non-productive cough for the past three weeks, but she otherwise denies chest pain, palpitations, lightheadedness, fever, changes in weight, or hemoptysis. She has had no sick contacts or unusual travel. Her past medical history is notable for the aforementioned hypertension, diabetes, and hyperlipidemia, all of which were diagnosed 10 years ago and all of which uh, she's getting treatment for currently. She has a surgical history of an appendectomy in 1977, a cholecystectomy in 1998, and a hysterectomy in 2008 for dysfunctional uterine bleeding. Psychiatric history is notable for several episodes of depression, but no reported history of psychiatric admissions or suicidal ideation. Her medications at home uh, include HCTZ 25 mg daily, lisinopril 20 mg BID, metformin 850 TID, glibiride 10 BID, simvastatin 40 daily, and aspirin 81 mg daily. Her compliance is reported to be very good. She has an allergy to penicillin, which causes a rash, and radio contrast, which causes urticaria. Social history is notable for 30 pack year smoking history. She quit in 2006. She consumes one to two alcoholic drinks per day. She is currently married and works as an administrative assistant. Her family history is notable for her father, who, as I mentioned, had an MI when he was 54, and he died at 69 from a stroke. Aside from what was reported in the HPI, a complete review of systems was otherwise unremarkable. On physical exam, she is uh, overweight and appears in uh, modest respiratory discomfort. Her vitals at the time of my exam uh, showed a pulse of uh, 100. Um, she had a respiratory rate of 24, uh, blood pressure 130 over 105, and a temperature of 37.1. Uh, focusing on just the pertinent positives and negatives of her exam, her pulmonary exam revealed bibasal or crackles, left greater than right with no wheezing. Her cardiac exam was notable for a regular rhythm, a PMI in the fifth intercostal space in the anterior axillary line, a normal S1 and S2, with a three out of six systolic crescendo decrescendo murmur best heard at the second right intercostal space with radiation to the carotids. Her JVP was eight centimeters. Abdominal exam was normal. Extremities with mild bilateral and symmetric pitting edema to the ankles without calf, uh, calf tenderness or erythema. A thorough neural exam was notable only for one plus biceps and triceps reflexes bilaterally. Regarding her labs, her chemistry panel uh, was notable for uh, BUN of 24 and creatinine of 1.1. Uh, CBC had a white count of 9 and a hemoglobin of 12. Uh, her troponin is still pending at this time. Uh, UA showed only 2 plus protein and uh, 2 plus glucose. Her, her chest x ray revealed cardiomegaly, a cephalization of vascular markings, a subtle curly B lines, and a small right pleural effusion. Uh, her EKG showed sinus tac uh, and occasional PVCs. Uh, she had a little bit of left axis deviation, and LVH was suggested by conventional uh, voltage criteria in the precordial leads, uh, but she had no ST or T changes of any kind on any of the leads. In the ER, prior to my examination, she had already received oxygen therapy via face mask of some lingual nitroglycerin, 325 of aspirin, and 40 milligrams of IV furosemide because the ER was concerned about pulmonary edema and possible acute coronary syndrome. Afterwards, uh, after she received this treatment, she reported feeling slightly improved. So in summary, uh, Ms. Brown is a 58-year-old woman with multiple cardiovascular risk factors with a subacute presentation of progressive dyspnea mild symmetric lower extremity edema, and a non-productive cough. She has objective evidence of modest volume overload and LVH, 
along with a murmur consistent with aortic stenosis. So that's the two versions of an HMP. I hope you found the comparison helpful. If I were to summarize the comparison in two points, I would first say that although both presentations conveyed most of the same facts about the patient, the second version was able to say a little more while simultaneously using fewer words. And second, the improved impression in the second version will greatly aid the viewer when trying to understand the subsequent differential diagnosis and plan of care for the presenting problem.